For us, it's his uh, dancing feet and his cheeky personality that we'll always be missing from our lives. This is Clive Treacy with his sister Elaine at a family party. Clive loved dancing, holidays, gardening and art. He drew this picture of his favourite place in Somerset. Clive had a learning disability and complex epilepsy and died in an assessment unit in Nottinghamshire at the age of 47, yet another person who spent years trapped in institutional care. It matters what happened to Clive. It matters it's still happening to others. What happened to Clive has been examined by an inquest and multiple agencies, but only now in a review commissioned by NHS Midlands, prompted by reporting by Sky News, have serious questions been raised about Clive's life and his death after a cardiac arrest. The review made more than 50 recommendations and concluded that Clive's death was potentially avoidable. It says Clive's institutionalisation resulted in an unnecessarily prolonged detention in hospital of nearly 10 years and that he remained incarcerated in settings that were poorly equipped to meet his needs. And the report says that the post-mortem and pathologist's report failed to consider sudden death in epilepsy as the cause of Clive's death. There is no justification. There's nothing on this planet could ever justify anybody's incarceration, away from their family, away from their futures and away from their aspirations, hopes and dreams. The report says there are unanswered questions about how Clive was treated by staff on the night he died and Clive's family want the contents of a memory stick they found by chance in a box of files reinvestigated. But all people around Clive have to be very cautious not to be stressing which is why Clive's family say they want an explanation of this footage found on the memory stick. It shows staff in the hospital corridors in the hours before Clive died. The door to Clive's bedroom is open and he is inside. Shared with Sky News, it was never played at the original inquest. From different angles, staff are seen leaving, then return flashing torches. Right outside Clive's room, another flashes their torch multiple times, even though the lights are on in the corridor and in Clive's room. Then a third person arrives. Clive's family want to know if this incident contributed to the seizure he had several hours later. They didn't have epilepsy training skills, knowledge, history, background to understand the implications of that torch. The distress he would have kept and tried to work around all night. It took less, historically for Clive, to have a seizure triggered. It took less. Excitement, calendar, dates, appointments. This is the last image of Clive going to make a call to his sister in which she says he sounded distressed. He wasn't wearing his seizure protection helmet. His family want to know if there had been some kind of altercation with staff who say he'd had a calm night and gone to bed after having a hot chocolate. For months, Clive had been raising concerns about his health and the way he said he was being treated. He wrote notes saying he hadn't been given his glasses, his hearing aid and his seizure helmet. This photo shows Clive's CPAP machine to help with sleep apnea was missing from his room as it was broken. The review says he'd been without it for seven weeks before his death. Clive left this voice message on his father's phone a month before he died. He knew he was dying. We all did. Nobody listened. Clive was one of 40 people who died trapped in autism and learning disability units between 2015 and 2018. The government said those deaths were not untoward, but in Clive's case, this review suggests otherwise. And Sky News has learned since 2018 there have been a further 35 deaths in these units, 10 of which were people under the age of 35. People are being placed in situations that do not keep them safe.
Beverly Dawkins wrote the review into Clive's death and says there is new evidence in her report which can be used to support the family's call for a second inquest. It felt like, given that we knew the ending, the, the, the very sad ending, it felt like sort of watching a slow motion train crash, but also knowing that what happened in his life may still be happening to other people. If the commitment to, to move him to the community had been carried through at that point, he, he may still have been alive today. Nottinghamshire police say the CCTV footage does not meet a criminal or safeguarding threshold. Staffordshire County Council says it will review safeguarding inquiries. The NHS says all deaths are investigated and they're working to reduce the number of people in units like Clive's. The hospital where he died has since been taken over. Its new owners, Signet Healthcare, say they have addressed any areas for improvement and will continue to share lessons learned. Lisa Holland, Sky News.